I mean, it's totally normal to review a phone while ignoring uh, like a core feature of that phone, right? That's something I totally complained about in my Razer review, you know, reviewing the phone for non-gamers, and I'm gonna be guilty of that here. I need more time with the Nokia 9 camera. I'm even making this tape on rig for blocking individual cameras. It's, it's a whole thing. But we should be able to talk about the rest of the phone, how it performs for the rest of your data needs in the first two weeks that I've been using it. So here we go. First, the main deal breaker. As the phone exists today, and I'm hoping a software update can help, I'm already not liking the in-display fingerprint sensor. Not liking is a really nice way of saying that. This is one of the roughest in-display fingerprint sensors yet. I refuse to use a phone without a screen protector and trying out three different options. I haven't found one that doesn't render this almost completely unusable. Mr. Shield doing the best so far. I've tried training the sensor in safe mode, but the best I've managed is to double scan each thumb once in a dark room with the screen set to uh, minimum brightness, then again in direct sunlight with the screen brightness set to max, and that works okay. It's just so weird how your screen brightness affects unlocking your phone, and you gotta keep that screen clean. Like my complaints with Face ID, we're getting more complicated, techier, cool solutions, but this doesn't work anywhere near as a traditional rear-mounted fingerprint scanner. That right there, the in-display fingerprint sensor, that could be a real deal breaker for folks on this phone. Otherwise, this is a nice balance of standard and premium hardware for a phone. Like the display, Quad HD OLED. In a sea of 1080p screens, it's refreshing to see an option arrive with a 1440p display. I wish I had a bit more control over color and tone, but it's gorgeous and it does a great job with videos and games. That display is framed by my favorite look for a two by one aspect ratio screen. It's a flat front face, minimal forehead and chin, no notch, takes me back to the LG G6. I think this looks great. I'm not too angsty about the Snapdragon 845 on a phone sold in 2019. I mean, you can still buy a OnePlus 6T today and the 9 performs well enough for my limited benchmarks, not quite reaching that upper tier of Razer performance, but it's a lightning quick daily driver with few stumbles or stutters, owed in no small part to this being Android One. This is about as stock as you can get, even more than Oxygen OS or the Razer using Nova Launcher. Clean, simple, maybe a bit stark, but little gets in the user's way, and I've come to adore unlocked phones for having a minimum of pre-installed value-added software, aka bloat. It's still early for this phone, so there are some UI gremlins. My home screens like to hang in landscape mode, for one example. Another example is kind of a twitchy keyboard. It seems to react to button presses aggressively enough that I type the wrong characters more than I think I should, and I haven't been able to get a feel for it in the first two weeks. HMD is a complete unknown to me, so I don't know what to expect for updates, and this phone could really benefit from a few but they've set a pretty high expectation in their media and labeling this Android One, so I hope they can live up to it. Real software support over a couple years would really help, especially for the slightly older chipset. Radio support is very good, falling just behind some of my Samsungs and LGs, easily mixing it up with Razors and OnePluses. It's not tough beating a $1,000 iPhone over Wi-Fi and LTE, but the Nokia does, pretty easily. Battery life has been just okay though. Not too surprising considering the capacity. A video streaming test is in the ballpark as other similarly spec flagship phones, but a day of heavy use, really firing up these cameras and this depth sensor and mashing all of that info together and capturing raw files and your cell can evaporate pretty quick. Under normal phone use, no issues lasting past dinner but mix in lots of photography and I'm reaching for the charger after lunch. That charging is also somewhat mid-pack. Not bad, just not as exciting as a new super or dash charger. If you can sit tight for 15 or 20 minutes, you should get hours of padding. And it does come with wireless charging, a hit or miss feature in the world of mid-rangers. So it was a nice homecoming, trotting out my first generation Nokia Qi charger and watching it top off my current generation Nokia phone. I'm all sentimental like that. I currently have a separate video on the state of my camera review. 
long story short, I really enjoy the look of photos from this array, as I genuinely prefer darker, contrastier shots, and depth mapping is crazy fun to play with. It's a significant step in the right direction for making phone photos look more like pro camera focus fall off. It's been plenty capable of keeping up with a hyped up toddler under dim indoor lighting, and that's a pretty tough test for me. That, and I don't hate the selfie camera. I even tried a let me shoot backlit into the sun to show you how bad a camera is, a la Linus, and this actually came out okay. I mean, it's a terrible shot because I'm shooting backlit into the sun, but that's not bad for image processing. I have two videos on this channel already looking at the 4K video and the 4K HDR video from this tiny little front camera. Otherwise, there's still a bit to untangle and test. And I really don't wanna invest days of shooting until this phone gets at least one more update. So stay tuned. The full audio deep dive is live and the full in-depth camera review will be on the Patreon when I can complete it. So let's wrap this up. Where's that leave us with the Nokia 9 PureView two weeks later? I feel better about this phone at the sale price. I'm really enjoying my time with it and it's unique. I'm looking to keep it as part of my collection. I hate flipping or returning phones anyway, but I don't know if I'd be feeling the same glow at $100 more. I hate playing the price game, that the only thing a company might have to offer is the exact same experience as Apple or Samsung, but undercutting the price. Every time I see that criticism, I would buy it if it cost less. I roll my eyes so hard I might dislocate my optic nerve, but we can't ignore that this is a complicated and extremely competitive market. I really like a OnePlus as an example of simplifying some of this. No BOGOs or carrier deals or waiting for price drops. It's a phone designed to launch and sell at $550. It's a great experience at $550. And you don't lose nearly as much resale if you grab that phone at full price right at launch as compared to grabbing a full price Galaxy at launch. I also don't like making a phone review into a comparison, but it's helpful here to illustrate how I feel about the Nokia. At $600, the 9 has a better screen with no notch, better rear photos, better selfie camera, wireless charging, true USB 3 with HDMI output, and a proper IP rating. The OnePlus 6T is a slightly snappier performer in benchmarks, has better rear camera video, a slightly better speaker, and better battery life. That's a great fight for a $50 price difference. A $100 $150 price difference though, I can still make some of those feature arguments, comparisons, but the perceived value, the emotional value is a little finer. Okay, it's a lot finer at that price. Not a deal breaker, but not quite as nice a feeling $700. Back to the phone. I really want this HMD experiment to succeed. You wanna talk about bias? I have a lot of love for this Nokia label and I wanna see it treated well. It's not enough to have another competitor making normal phones using this brand. Entry level and mid-range fare has always been Nokia's bread and butter, but we desperately need a company that will drop the occasional crazy experiment device again. Especially if we can get something novel, something unique and not have it cost $2,000 to take it for a spin. Now we'll just have to hope that HMD can realize or they can actually deliver on the potential of this glowing rectangle. That's tricky. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing my videos, subscribing to this channel. There's so much more to say about the Nokia 9. Gonna do a full long-term review, gonna catch up with some other photo and video samples for that camera deep dive. If you would like to support those conversations, please head on over to somegadgetguy.com. You're gonna find a little support banner, click on that, and you'll get the full list of all my current affiliates and partnerships. Or you can also consider contributing directly on my Patreon page. It's uh, it's where all of the camera deep dive reviews go. So that's, that's a perk. And then it's also becoming a really fun community of like-minded gadget and tech pals. Patreon.com slash some gadget guy. I hope you'll check it out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Instagrams, sometimes on the Facebooks and a little bit more often on the Twitch. And I will catch you all on the next review. Thank <laughs> you.